Next, I'd like to introduce uh, Sheikh Hussein, or Sheikh Noah, hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, basically, Sheikh Hussein Noah is an executive director of Abu Bakr Sadiq Islamic Center, the largest Islamic center in Ohio, and the director of SICO, Somali Islamic Centers of Ohio. Sheikh Hussein's work, uh, Sheikh Hussein's work focuses on youth mentoring, spiritual, spirituality, activism, interfaith, dialogue, and community building. A co-founder and associate Executive Director of Institute of Horn of Africa Studies and Affairs. Sheikh Horset also advocates for the human rights issue in Horns of Africa. Sheikh Horset also holds a degree in biochemistry and microbiology from Osman University and is currently working on his uh, master's. So, uh, come on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. وحان رواه هل شيء إن نراه ذا إن تانو بلاه إنه كتر صدوا قبل دي ولا شيء يقول ريسه بلش هذا سوام عليه ده حيله هنجرا نقل رنتي قروح بدن أو هبل نقل كإسلام كان عيسق وماتي سلف الجران لكن ما كده نبي واحد عادي إن لاك هنا نقمه ودمك هنا لقى هنا بدري مركع نقل كودي يذا اللي جوسو قرية مرك أما اللي جوسو راعي تين تين وحنكوا ضع مرك سامارة ده مده أوجه تو ماشي هو الرئيس هو إسلام كجاري إسلام كم أكو كده شيء ماشي هو الرئيس جاري لولك أنكرني بدوي سامارة إيست أفريقيا ماشي جعفر يمادين ذن مدينة كحكت مرك رقة نوالين هاي تين نوالين مرك أنت ترى بينا كدرو وانارين عن جعله اللي جو برارو بسم الله والحمد لله والسلام على سيدنا محمد وبعد. If Sister Saadi would allow me to speak in English because I'm looking at a lot of young brothers and sisters, and I was asked to talk about the importance of activism. And let me say something about Helping Hand. Where's the brother? I think he left. I was the West Coast coordinator of Helping Hand, HHRD, Helping Hand Relief and Development. It's really an amazing organization. They were the first organization that was on the ground when when that famine hit, you know, uh, in Somalia. So I encourage everyone to reach deep in their pocket and lend a helping hand, a loving hand, to 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 whatever they're doing. Now I'll go to my topic the importance of activism. Um, but I have to first thank, I, I'm so exhausted, so I'm, I know I'm forgetting a lot. I, I want to really thank from the bottom of my heart, um, Sister Saadia and, and Brother Abu Karman, uh, Sister Fouzia, and everyone who was part of this amazing, amazing conference. Uh, I always wanted to be part of this, but it was the Qadr of Allah that I'm here with you today. Um, a little over a year ago, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, you know, blessed me with a son, and I was in the hospital, as soon as the doctor placed him into my arms, Allah, Allah is my witness, I, I started shivering like I had a fever. And I was looking at my son and I said, SubhanAllah, if my world as his father if my world, and that was, I think, when Donald Trump uh, was, you know, I think during his elections, and he was talking about Somalis, and that was when I'm from Columbus, Ohio, uh, during the tragedy of SU, when he said uh, he was a Somali refugee who didn't even deserve to be in this country. And I was looking at my son and I said, if this is my world, a world of Muslim ban, deportation, a world of pornography because we live in a world where more than 29 million are watching pornography every second not every minute more than 685 millions right now are watching pornography every day so i'm looking at my son and i'm like if this is my world as his father a world of political subjugation indecency financial exploitation name it what kind of world is waiting for him and that has inspired me and motivated me to be an activist now because i have to pave the way for him, you know, to live a better world. I mean, growing up, one of my favorite songs was 
Michael Jackson has healed the world. So you know how old I am. I was a big fan of Michael Jackson, you know, for you and for me and the entire whatever. Um, so, because the definition of activist is someone who is campaigning to bring a positive social change, right? And this country, United States of America, we have a history of so many youth-led movements that finally brought a beautiful change, positive change, you know, the civil rights, the immigration reform, name it. But since I was introduced as a sheikh, of course, I would look at the world through the lenses of our tradition, Quran and the traditions of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Think about this. The second command our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was given was قُمْ فَأَنْذِرْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْمُدَّثِّرُ قُمْ فَأَنْذِرْ You have no time to sleep. All you who is under the bed sheet, stand up because you have a job to do. يَا أَيُّهَا الْمُزَّمِّلُ Stand up, you have a job to do. إِنَّ لَكَ فِي النَّهَارِ سَبْحًا طَوِيلًا You have a huge, colossal task ahead of you tomorrow. Stand up. Be an activist. Do you see the importance of activism? The first command was Iqra, read, recite, get to know about your Lord. Because the readers of today are what? The leaders of tomorrow. So read. And the second command was now that you have a knowledge, قُمْ فَأَنذِرْ Knowledge and action. So Islam always links knowledge and action, faith in action. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands our Prophet قُمْ فَأَنذِرْ You have a job to do. Now, in Islam, activism should and must encompass all of the aspects of our life. All of the aspects of our life. Politically, economically, socially, name it, environmentally. So, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears and says, all of you are losing if you don't link your faith then action. Wal-asr. Allah swears by the time and says, all of you are losing. Except those who have a faith. And their faith links to what? Those who are constantly engaged. They are doing the righteous things. And then, those who confront each other with the truth, those who speak to power, those who give each other a moral support. So, in our tradition, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, your belief in the oneness of God and your belief in the, the fact that our Prophet is the last message, uh, the last messenger, and our belief of the last day, the day of judgment, must propel you into action so Islam always links faith to action and what can be more clearer than the tradition where our Prophet says if you see something that's wrong if it's politically economically financial manipulation whatever be an activist speak against it write about it lobby you know Try to establish institutions that respond and challenge to this injustice. So Islam emphasizes the importance of activism. Now, I just want to look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described all of those great chosen messengers of God. What was their mission? Because majority of the Quran deals with what? Stories. And Allah says to our Prophet Sallallahu Narrate to them these stories. Share with them these stories so that they reflect. So whenever Allah sends a messenger, their mission was to A, spiritually rejuvenate people. The concept of Tawheed. You know, just worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, your creator, not the creations. And number two, they were speaking against the social problems of their time, the economical problems of their time, the political problems of their time. So, for example, Prophet Shaib, during his time, he, of course, and by the way, Prophet Sallallahu calls Prophet Shaib Khatib al-Anbiya, you know, the speaker, the orator of all of the messengers of Allah. 
you know, he calls them to the path of God, but then there was a financial manipulation that was taking place during his time, and he wasn't silent about it. He addressed them because there were a group of people who were financially manipulating the masses. And if you read the Quran, there is a group of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all, always calls them al-mala, you know, the elite. <laughs> people who always come between the message of God and the masses. People who always come between the messengers of God and the masses. What they do? They distort the truth. They character assassinate the activists. They do uh, dehumanization, you know, threat construction, uh, destruction of alternatives, fear, all of these, you know. So he was talking to them and he was telling them, you know, stop financially manipulating the people. And I think one of the brothers, I think brother, what's your name? Mahdi, you know, he. He, he was talking about uh, the Confessions of Economic Hitman, I think Perkins, right? Yeah. And, and if you read books like Confessions of Economic Hitman, or uh, I think uh, Moyo's uh, Dead Aid, or One Bottom Million, or Revisiting Politics and Business Globally, or Unfair Trade, all of these books are talking about the financial manipulations that are taking place today in the world how powerful institutions subjugate and manipulate the masses whether they're imf or the world bank so prophet shaib alayhi wa ala nabi salatu wasalam during his time he was addressing this an activist and his life was always threatened you know you will be character assassinated but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is the path of my chosen servants. If you see Prophet Lud during his time, of course, he also called the people to the path of God, right? Worship God. But then there was indecency that was taking place during his time. You know, people were morally bankrupt. But then he was addressing that. God made me what? A voice, a, 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 someone who brings a, a positive social change wherever I may be. And talking about our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he comes at the time where nobody speaks for the children, the girls. They were being what? They, 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 they were all buried. Imagine a father who grabs his beautiful daughter and you know, buries her six feet deep in the ground. And this was the norms. He speaks for them. You see? And even if you study the chronological order of Quran and you think about the fourth year of the prophethood of our Prophet. And this was a time when, if you think Islamophobia started now, this was when Islamophobia was the worst, the peak, right? This was the time where uh, Amr ibn Abbas al Sulami and, and, and you know, companions of the Prophet وسلم, would come to him and will say, Shakawna ila Rasulullah. We come complaining to the Prophet because we couldn't handle this anymore. It was so difficult. And we said, When will this come to an end? This was a time when they will come to him وسلم, and they will say, uh, when one Sahabi one time came to him and he said, I just want to hang around with you and be among your friends, right? What did the Prophet say? You can't do this today. Don't you see what Quraysh are doing to us? Don't you see what the elites are doing to us? Don't you see? the level of Islamophobia. It was during this time, this time, moments of fear, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the Muslims to be activists who stand up for the poor and the orphans. And that's when Allah, what? Asks them a question. Do you know the one who denies this religion? And subhanAllah, the first thing that would come to my mind is the one who rejects God and his messengers and his scriptures in the day of judgment. But Allah says, It's those who don't encourage the feeding of the poor. 
those who don't establish institutions that respond to the suffering, to the need of the orphans, those who don't take care of the orphans. It was during this time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا You know, believers always, they're not selfish. They, they stand up for the poor, the orphans, the oppressed. So that was how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even uh, commanded our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to, to, to stand up and be that voice. And if you even think about the names of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, Bashir, Munir, Allah describes him as what? Rahmatan lil alameen, one who always brings mercy, positive social change to the people. Siraj al Munira, a shining lamp one who drops that hope. And how Allah, if you think about, describes our religion, and I at least want all of us just to think about this, in Surah Araf, in the chapter of Araf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala breaks down Islam in front of us in six points. So Allah says, Muhammad was sent as, يَأْمُرُهُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَاهُمْ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَيُحِلُّ اللَّهُمُ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَيُحَرِّمُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْخَبَائِثَ in six points. He always reminds them, he's a voice that reminds them everything that would bring them success and change in this life and akhirah. And he forbids them from doing things that would destroy them. He is always that voice. He's always commanding that which is pure and healthy for them, that which is environmentally good for them. And the last two points is very amazing. I think sister, the sister was talking about the mental issues, has, mashallah, explained that beautifully. He always removes the stress, the anxiety, the, the depression from their life. And this brings me to, to say that Islam recognizes stress, depression, and anxiety. One of the dua which is constantly featured in the life of our Prophet was Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal-huzni wal Oh Allah save me from stress, from anxiety, from... Islam never denied that. But then our role, role has a, I mean our faith has a role to help us cope with that. Maraki qaar kuhut wa haad da'adha or runti wa hlaga in uh, mental illness 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 no no islam recognizes that ama in darasad ku hay dhahan qof walba oo because of mental illness قف أمر الله الله هذا هو يدستين عاويان قف كسام سليد قري قف مينتال إن سمر كوي ما دات رافو حاجة فرس القرآن بنكو أخرينا you misunderstood your faith القرآن كإلهي يحير وشفاء لما في صدور ودوه مر والبا لكن إلهي يحون سيا أسباب ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يحير إلهي عذر ما كان إلا دوود اللي قد دوين لها أنا أدون كي تعالى أسباب تأمر كوا إن لقات in conclusion, why are we talking about activism? Why are we here? One of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Hakim, the all-wise one. There is a wisdom behind your creation. And one of the first questions that you would be asked in the Day of Judgment is what? Allah says to you, I, what have you done with your life, with your wealth, and with your knowledge? Do you know what this hadith is implying to? You've been given opportunities and resources to fulfill a mission. Have you done your job? The importance of activism. Why do you think the Prophet ﷺ says, if you have a seed in your hand and the day of judgment starts, plant it? Who will benefit from it? No one. But this is just to show us what? The importance of being active and doing something. Brothers and sisters, we have been given everything we need to be a great human being, people who can add value to the lives of their fellow human being, because Allah says, Alam Najallahu Ainain, Walisan and Washafatain, Wahadain Najadain. You have been given everything you need 
to add value to the lives of your fellow human being regardless of their religion and geographical location so what's your job go and aspire to inspire before you expire that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Go and aspire to inspire before you expire. Fakur raqaba. Go and liberate a soul. Liberate a soul from the shackles of financial manipulation, from the shackles of political subjugation, from the shackles of gangster lifestyle, thug life. Again, growing up, I was a big fan of Tupac. But what I'm <laughs> so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us those who stand tall and represent their Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jazakumullah khairan wa salam alaykum wa rahmatullah.